in today's message we share insights on three powerful gifts gifts of healings working of miracles and faith learn how these are initiated and released all right why don't we uh, stand up on our feet we'll make our declaration this morning and then we were going to uh, spend some time in god's word together so if you brought your bible i want you to just hold it high up in the air let's say this out loud bold and strong this is god's word this is god speaking to me i am who god says i am i can do what god says i can do i will become everything god has promised i'm saved healed delivered redeemed i am blessed victorious prosperous triumphant i'm a minister of god a servant of christ and a channel of his blessing to many people i receive his word i believe his word and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender in jesus name amen please turn around say hi to the people next to you welcome them greet them give them your name and uh, you may be seated let's turn our bibles please to first corinthians chapter 12 we're going to read a few verses from first corinthians 12 as well as uh, chapter 14 as we continue our time and just learning about the gifts of the holy spirit this is the uh, fifth message in the series and uh, well we'll spend a few more sundays on this first corinthians chapter 12 we'll read verses 1 through 11 and then i'll just pick out a few uh, verses uh, uh, from other from chapter 14 as well first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 onwards now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i do not want you to be ignorant you know that you were gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is lord except by the holy spirit there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries but the same lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for the one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gift of healings by the same spirit to another the workings of working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills or also like to read verse 31 in the same chapter but earnestly desire the best gifts and yet i show you a more excellent way i mean chapter 14 verse 1 pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy but also like to read verse 12 of chapter 14 even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel so we've been spending time over these several sundays talking about the gifts of the holy spirit and uh, you know sometimes say why are we talking about the gifts of spirit paul mentions in verse 1 first corinthians 12 he says brethren i don't want you to be ignorant about these things so god's people you and i should not be ignorant we need to know learn understand be equipped and actuated stirred up to move to flow in the gifts of the holy spirit so that's why we are spending time so we are on a in a journey of discovery if you will that means we are discovering about these things 
And then we got to go and try them out, practice them, learn them. And at some point, we will have more and more proficiency, uh, if you will, in these things. So don't get discouraged saying, well, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I tried it once, it didn't work. Look, when you and I were little kids, when we tried to ride our bike the first time and you fell, you don't go back to your dad or mom and say, hey, I tried it once, it didn't work. The bike is faulty. No, what did we do? We got back on the bike, tried again. And some of us have lasting memories of those <laughs> at our elbows and knees. I can still look at my elbows and knees and I can remember some of these things. I know exactly where I felt, you know. And, uh, and even when we started riding the bike well, then we took it to extremes. You know, we would go really fast, skid and fall. Again, you wouldn't blame the bike. You just learned that, okay, there are some things you don't do with the bike, even if you're very good in riding it. You know, so this is a learning process. And just relax, uh, take your time, but make this journey uh, of moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit because God desires that for all of us. These are not just, you know, for a few people who are really interested in ministry and things like that. It's for all believers. And it's something that God wants to do. I want to just highlight a few things we've already stated in the past, but just to remind us, the Bible says here that these are gifts of the Spirit. So they belong to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you all the time as a believer, which means that these gifts, any of these gifts, all of these gifts can actually flow through you anytime. So you don't leave the Holy Spirit back here on Sunday morning. He's with you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's with you all the time. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit can actually manifest through your life anywhere, anytime. It doesn't have to be some very spiritual environment. It could be at home. It could be in the, in, you know, in the park. It could be in the mall. It could be in the restaurant or in your school, your college, wherever, wherever you are. There's an opportunity the Spirit of God can manifest. And I want to highlight the other part where it says these are manifestations of the Spirit. Expressions, visible expressions of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit is God. This is, these are manifestations of God. The world says, show me God. Where is God? Hey, you have, you and I as believers have the opportunity to put God on display. So tap your neighbor and say, you can put God on display. See, these are manifestations. Manifestations making God visible. And people want to see, where is God? Of course, there are many ways people can see. You can see God in creation, or the world around us, so on. But you and I, as believers, God is saying, look, I want to manifest I want to put myself on display to the world through you, through these gifts. You with me? So these, this is amazing. You and I can actually put God on display. People say, show me God. Well, here's one way to the gifts. These are manifestations of God to the believer so that the world around us can see God on display. And so imagine... More and more of us, as we are equipped, and our, as we are able to take this out of the church, into uh, the marketplace, into the streets, we put God on display. People say, give me evidence. When they see these gifts put on display, it's, being God, it's God being put on display. Amen? Verse 14 of uh, 1 Corinthians 12 that we read, it says, uh, verse 12... 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12, chapter 14, verse 12. It says, in even so as you are zealous of spiritual gifts. I want us to be zealous. Like the Corinthian church. Be zealous of spiritual gifts. Right? Church shouldn't be boring. Being a Christian should be bo shouldn't be boring. We should be zealous. And, 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 and so we're excited. We are zealous of spiritual gifts. Here's what I want to encourage you and I. And what I, what, the way I want us as a church to live is that every day you're looking for opportunities to put God on display through these gifts. Every day. So when you wake up tomorrow and you're going to work, 
You're like, you're ready. God, I wish I have an opportunity today to tap into one of these gifts today, to serve somebody, to bless somebody's life, to help somebody through these gifts. And you may have an opportunity. It may be a problem situation. Maybe somebody comes to you, uh, 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 you know, wanting advice, wanting counsel, whatever. That's an opportunity for you to put God on display, to tap into these gifts. So live like that. That should be our mindset. Amen? I'll just share this. I shared this at the church camp. and I'm just sharing this to make a point. Uh, it's not a great success story, but it's, uh, I just want to illustrate. This is the way we're supposed to be thinking. Uh, this happened during church camp maybe two weeks back when we had the church camp. It was a day two of the church camp, Friday. So morning around, around 6 o'clock, went for a walk. Those of you who heard this, please forgive me. It's for the benefit of those who haven't. <laughs> uh, I just went out for a walk outside, walking out. Uh, you know, we were at that resort. So I walked out of the resort, just walking down. It's not a very well-developed area, but just walking around there. Had a little, stopped at a tea stall, had a little tea, and then just walking back. And then as I was walking back to the resort in a distance, I saw a dead person. Right? There were about five men around. Here was a dead body. They covered it with a green bed sheet. And, uh, they had, you know, put flowers and uh, incense sticks and bananas and all of those things, which they normally... You know, they do. And so I saw, okay, there's a dead person there. There are a couple of people around it. The first thing that went through my mind was I saw myself laying hands on the dead body and telling it to come back to life. First thing, opportunity. Let's demonstrate God. Let's put God on display. That's the way I want you and I to think. And when you see this, that's the way we should be thinking. Because we as God's people have access to manifest the Holy Spirit. Put God on display. Just for thing. Okay, here's an opportunity. So they were still way off, so I kept walking. But the next thing was my problem. It's like, I don't know Canada. I can't speak Canada. How am I going to tell them, I, I want to, is it okay if I pray for the body to be raised? How am I going to tell them? So that was going on in my mind. So I kind of walked past the, the dead body there, walked past, went further down. The next thing that went to my mind was, hey, I don't know, I think it was two years ago when we were in Navasari, we saw a dead man come back to life. So I was recalling that miracle. I said, wow, God has done that before. But this is also a village setting that also happened in a village. You know, so here's another opportunity for God to do it again. So I was remembering that miracle, that, 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 that raising of the dead man there in Navasari in Gujarat. And that happened. So that went through my mind and I was just walking a little further. And I thought about Jesus who, you know, he walked into the city of Nain. And there he saw this funeral procession of a young man uh, and the widow. And, and he stopped and he, and he said, young man, I say to you, arise. So, you know, these are, this is my thought process. This is what's going through my mind. So then I said, okay. I know I don't know the language, but I can try. So I stopped and I walked back. And I stood next to where the body was. The men were there. They were doing something. One man was crying and all that. I just stood there. Uh, I don't know. Just to show them I'm interested. And then I heard them speak in Tamil. I said, okay, I can manage Tamil. <laughs> so I stepped in. I asked, what happens in Tamil? <laughs> I don't want to speak Tamil. You might laugh at me. You know? <laughs> So I just said in Tamil, you know, in Natsupa, you know, and uh, then he told me, he said, you know, last evening, this, this is in front of another tea stall. The tea stall was closed. Uh, this man was sitting here. He fell down. He died. And, you know, and all that. They said he's a truck driver, etc. Okay. Then in Tamil, I couldn't even frame the whole sentence, but I said, can I pray? Jom <laughs> Panlama. That's all I knew. Yeah, sure. Pray. But then I needed to tell them I'm praying in the name of Jesus. So I said, you know, Asia Sami, you know, I couldn't form the whole sentence, but I just wanted to let them know I'm praying in the name of Jesus. So yes, yes, you know, go ahead. And so I laid my hand on that, that body, it was cold, ice cold, so he must have been dead for quite some time. Body's there, and it didn't seem very old man, must have been in his 40s. And, uh, you know, so started praying. Rebuke the spirit of death, commanded life to come in, release the power of God, do what we know to do. I was praying, maybe prayed for about 10 minutes. Now, nothing happens. And uh, I did leave the place. The man wasn't ra raised from the dead. I, I walked, uh, walked away after that. But the reason I'm sharing this is 
I want us at all times, all days of the week, to be thinking supernatural. To be thinking in, along these lines. God, your Holy Spirit is with me and I want to see the manifestations of the Spirit. But in order to do that, three things that we've mentioned before. First, you and I must desire spiritual gifts. That's what 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says. Desire, earnestly desire, covet, covet. And here's something you can covet, you can have a strong desire for. It's not bad. Covet the gifts, earnestly desire the best gifts. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. 14, 1, chapter 14, verse 1. Covet, desire. Second, we must walk in love. So desire the spiritual gifts, walk in love, and third, step out in faith. Take risks. Step out. Attempt. Try. Three things. So these are gifts of the Spirit. God wants to put Himself on display through you and me. But there's just three simple things He's asking you and me to do. What is it? Desire. Walk in love. Step out in faith. Simple things. He's asking you and me. And that's the mindset with which we should walk. Through the course of the week, wherever you are, God Today I might have an opportunity. Maybe for a word of wisdom. Maybe for a word of knowledge. Maybe for a gift of healings. Maybe for a, a working in miracles. We're going to talk about that today. But you and I must be desiring these things. God give me opportunity. God, I want to walk. Uh, desire these gifts. I want to love people. Uh, we are motivated by love. Why do we take risks? Because we love people. We want to step out. We step out in love. And thirdly is you step out in faith. I'll take risks. See, it's not about your reputation. Take risks. Nothing to lose. If you're dead to yourself anyway, you're dead. A dead man doesn't care about his reputation. You're dead. Step out. What if it doesn't happen? Hey, try again. We are in this journey. We are trying to discover. We're going to press in. And one day our prayer is that this will become commonplace. Amen? Amen. That we'll all be so zealous, zealous of this and pressing into it. We'll come back Sunday after Sunday talking about these things. We'll talk about it, these things to each other, with each other at home. And say, hey, this week I did this. This happened. I prayed for this person. This happened. But until we get there, we've got to keep taking risks. We've got to keep stepping out in faith. We've got to keep getting back on the bike and riding again. Amen. And so imagine, this, this is how the Corinthian church was. They were zealous of spiritual things. So let's be zealous as well. Amen? Now, um, we, just reviewing here, we categorize these nine gifts uh, into three categories. Revelation gifts, gifts that reveal something. Vocal gifts, gifts that say something. And power gifts, gifts that do something. Uh, so today... We're going to talk about these three power gifts and then we'll take some time just to uh, let God manifest those gifts uh, amongst us. Power gifts. Um, the gift of faith, gifts of healings, workings of miracles. We'll talk about them. Uh, just to remind you how the Holy Spirit initiates these gifts. These things come out of our spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit communicates to us in our spirit through what we feel, see, hear, taste, smell. He imparts that. From there, we pick it up, we reason in our soul, we understand what the Spirit of God is saying, and then we act and we do something. We either say something or do something in response to the initiation that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives when He wants to release some of these gifts. So today, we're going to talk about these three gifts, the power gifts. Gifts of healings, workings of miracles, and the gift of faith. It won't be too long. I will explain this, and then we're going to spend some time praying. Gifts. Of healings. The New King James has double plural. Gifts and healings. Meaning there are many of these things. And healings. It means all kinds. Healing for the body. Healing for the mind. Right? So we don't have to explain. Define this very much. It's a, a supernatural work of God. That brings healing to a person. Person's body or mind. God's power flowing through. So just imagine this. That God wants to release his power through you to heal somebody else to heal their body or their mind their soul god wants to do it through you they all look don't look very convinced 
Put your hands out in front of you. Let's all put our hands out. Just say this thing. God wants to release gifts of healings through me. God wants to manifest himself through me. Through gift of healings. Amen. He wants to do it through you. Right? Now notice it's called gifts. We don't earn it. You don't have to pass the MBBS to have this. It's a gift. God's grace. It's just God releasing it through you. You and I just make ourselves available to the power of God. These are gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit power being released through our lives to bring healing to others. In the, either in the body or in their minds. So, obviously this is so powerful that, you know, when people, exp people actually encounter God, they meet God through the gifts, through this expression of the Holy Spirit. When they experience healing, they actually encounter God. This is God manifesting Himself. God showing up before them. And it's up to them, of course, at that time uh, to say, yes, this is God or no, this is it. That decision is up to them. But at least they've had an encounter. God's been displayed to them. Now they have to make a choice. Do they want to believe in the living God or not? Right? Now, uh, we don't have to necessarily uh, go through all the examples in the Bible. Right from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. We have examples of God healing people. All kinds of healing miracles. Healings that we see in the Bible. Starting... Uh, you know, with uh, Abimelech's, uh, the healing of Abimelech's wife's womb and, and uh, just all kinds of healings that we have recorded in uh, the Bible. And God is healer. He has a power. He releases his power to heal people. And you know, as far as God is concerned, so I'm not necessarily reading, um, mentioning all the examples. Um, but as far as God is concerned, whether it's the healing of something small, you got a stomach upset. Or whether there's a healing of something really big. That small and big is only in our estimation. Right? It's in our estimation. But for God, He designed the whole body. He designed the mind. He knows everything about it. And so for God, whether it's a small thing or a big thing from our estimation, for God, it's the same thing. It's His power fixing somebody's physical or emotional problem right it's the same thing for God our biggest barrier is our minds because you know we all say okay for the stomach problem that's easy I'll pray I'm sure it'll get well but if it's something big oh mm, what do I do that it becomes immediately a mental barrier for us not for God for us so that's where we must Learn to put that aside. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. God, you're bigger than this. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do what I know I can do. And I'm expecting God to come through. So step out in faith. Uh, and, and expect God. Remember that, that, that estimation of the problem. Maybe is, is only in our minds. Not in God's. So I'm going to skip right through. Talk a little bit about how the Holy Spirit initiates the release of the gifts of healing. And, and, and remember, the Bible tells us there in verse 7 that we read in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, uh, sorry, verse 6, there are diversities of activities or operations, but it's the same God who works all in all. That means the way this gift operates is different. This is a supernatural gift. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And the way God operates these gifts is diverse. There are many, many ways through which the gift of healings can flow through your life and mine. What I want to do is just share a few pointers so that you and I will become aware. Oh, this is the way God would initiate uh, the gift. One common way is this. That you get a knowing of the desire of God's heart. A knowing of what God, des of God, what, of what God is desirous to do. It comes to you. And when you recognize it, that's when we have to do the rest of the thing. We have to desire, walk in love, step out in faith. But the knowing comes to you. For example, we'll illustrate this in John, from John 5. When Jesus goes by the pool of Bethesda, there are a lot, lot of sick people around the pool. 
But Jesus sees one man and he goes up to him and he asks this man, would you like to be made well? Would you like to be made whole? Now this man doesn't know who Jesus was because he's been in there. He doesn't know anything about Jesus' public ministry. He's not heard about Jesus, nothing. He's been lying there by the pool. So probably he has, he has no idea who's speaking to him. So he says, you know, I don't have anybody who can throw me in the water when the angel comes down. And after that, Jesus ministers to him. He says, rise, take your bed. The power of God comes and heals him. Now why did Jesus go to that one man? Here's what Jesus says in John 5 and verse 19. He says, the son can do nothing of himself except what he sees the father do. So he's giving us an insight into why he went to that one man. He saw the father. In some way, the father communicated to him, go minister to that one person. Go serve that person. And so he went. Similarly for you and me. God would move on our hearts as a prompting. Look, I want to release healing through you for that person. Right? It may be a friend. It may be a stranger. Maybe your heart is filled with compassion for that person. God, I moved for that person. Maybe uh, you see the person comes to you and, and you call the person. Hey, what, is there anything wrong? And you find out there's something wrong and you begin to reach out to that person. God puts that person on you or God moves you towards that person. He's indicating to you what he desires to do for that person in terms of healing that person. But you and I must do the next three things. Desire, walk in love, step out in faith. Are you with me? Okay. So one way that God initiates this is by just putting that desire in your heart to reach out, minister to that person. Sometimes a very common way is another way is through words of knowledge. So sometimes when we are ministering here or when we are talking to a person individually, you might get a little picture of, of, of a certain part of the body that's afflicted or a, or a certain condition that God wants to heal. So you mention it, you call it out. Or when you are talking to that person, you ask that person, do you have such and such a problem? And they might say, yes, I have. And then you begin to minister to that. So that word of knowledge is an indicator to you that God wants you to step out and release gifts of healing towards that person. Or in that area, that condition. And usually, when you call that out, when you mention that, uh, people respond. When people respond immediately, uh, that, that word of knowledge builds faith in their heart, saying that, yes, God wants to heal this. They connect with that, and it causes healing to come forth. Right? So words of knowledge are very important, because it builds faith in people's lives. And it's an indicator to you and to them, God wants to heal that condition. Another thing that happens commonly in our service uh, would be a recognition of God's healing presence. So as we are worshiping, if we recognize God's presence is moving towards healing, where you get a sense, and usually the worship leader senses it, or the person coming up to pray, the sense that hey, God's moving in that direction, He wants, He's really healing, he, releasing a healing presence, then we begin to move and minister that way. So even a recognition of God's healing presence can be a, a God saying, look, I want to release gifts of healing. So how do you release this? Basically, you declare and you announce, you see what you say, what you see God revealing to you. You declare it. You have to act on it. You have to speak it. You pray the prayer of faith. You release words. You command the sickness to go. You're stepping out on what God is moving you into. Are you with me so far? Right? So if you feel like, God is, wants to heal that person. God wants to move in healing towards that person. What do you do? You've got to step out. So can I pray for you? Or do you have this condition, please? And then you begin to pray. Can I pray? And you just release through faith. You minister to that person. So God shows you. God initiates it. But you and I must flow, must respond and minister to people. And then there are, of course, times when, when uh, uh, there may not be great faith, but God just moves supernaturally. Healing people. Uh, I remember one lady, and this was some time back, she came right here in this auditorium. Uh, worship was going on, and she was a visitor. She doesn't worship here all the time. Uh, she walked, and she said she had a, a shoulder problem that, that, you know, she couldn't move her shoulder for a long time, many years. She came into the service. She sat. Nobody knew. Worship was going on. God healed her, and she went back. And then she sends word, I, I heard it through, like her nephew or whoever came with her. Uh, through him. Hey, 
uh, actually it's his mother. So my mother came to your service and this is what happens. So it was just God moving by his spirit, just healing this person. And it was significant because the shoulder was in that condition for many years. It wasn't like, you know, a shock, uh, somebody punched her in the shoulder or something. It is a serious problem. And she was completely released of it. So th that God moves just during that healing uh, time of worship, the healing presence of God. God moves that way. There are other times you call out words of knowledge. You announce certain conditions. I remember uh, in Pune, we were just ministering to a leaders meeting. He announced uh, uh, before the service, before going to the service, I felt God wanted to heal people with, with hearing problems. Uh, their ears were damaged. So I went to the stage. I just announced after worship or it was uh, after the ministry of the word. I announced anybody here with a hearing problem, God would heat you. And four people came up immediately and all four of them had different reasons on why they had problems in the year. Some was uh, damaged. One was in the army. was damaged because of that. Uh, uh, something happened there and you know others who had an accident so different can causes for the problem but they were all healed at that moment so you announce that word and they respond by faith hey that's me that means God wants to heal me I take it I receive it and they experience healing immediately so uh, there are different ways in which God does it there, there are times when you may not feel great faith. I remember this, this once, and again, this was a very long time ago. We were in New Jersey at that time. Uh, and uh, this, this was a Hispanic church, Spanish-speaking church. Uh, the interpreter next to me was uh, Maria. She was working in the hospital. And this family that came and stood before us was a lady with a, child, with a young child, just a year old. But they had, Maria knew their condition. She was working in the hospital as a social worker and they had gone and approached their department for financial assistance. Because this family had already spent $18,000 running all the tests just to find out what was wrong with their baby. The baby had tumors in the brain and things were out on the forehead, I mean on the head and everything. So it was serious and they were just, just to find out what was wrong, they already had such a huge bill. So they were there standing in front. Maria knew the condition. She told me what it was. Now, I can't say I had great faith, but we had compassion. We were moved with compassion. That's the only thing I can say we really had. I didn't even remove the cap that the mother had put on top of the baby's head. Just left it like that. Prayed a simple prayer. You know, did what we know what to do, which is you rebuke the tumor, you command it to go, you tell it to, you know, the things, you curse it by your roots, you use the name of Jesus, release the pathology, okay, you do that. But what really moved us was compassion for the family, for the baby. All right, next, you know, Chris finished praying. So, kept praying for the others in the service, finished that. The service was over. Maria got into the car with this family to take them to the train station. They'd actually come from another town. They'd taken the train to come here. She got in the car. So this was within the hour after service was over. And I, we were staying nearby, so we would go home ourselves. But she went with them in the car to drop them to the train station. She was sitting in the back seat next to the mother. She knew exactly what was wrong with the child. In the car, she lifted up the cap, ran her, head to the child's head, ran her hand to the child's head, Everything was gone. Everything was gone. <laughs> happened within the hour. Right? So this is something that happened. There was no great faith. It was only compassion. Just, but God gave a gift. God released a gift to that. We were just channels. But he was putting himself on display. Amen. Did we do anything great? No. We did the same things we always do. In the name of Jesus. Pray. So what you and I have to do is desire the gift, have love or compassion, whatever word you want to use, and step out in faith. Pray in faith. Minister in faith. Speak in faith. Do the things you and I are taught to do in faith in the name of Jesus. Let God take care of the rest. Now sometimes you may see the healing happen instantaneously like within an hour. Sometimes it may happen a little later. We don't have, that's not in our control. Don't worry. You just do what you have to do. Amen? As a person, as an individual, your reputation, be dead to your reputation. It's not about you. 
It's about God. It's about the person in need. Be dead to yourself. Don't worry what will people think about me. Or what will they say about me. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about that person. Amen. So take the risk. So like the gift of healing, the workings of miracle, what is it? It's God's supernatural intervention into natural elements, elements of nature, into life situations, into events that are taking place, and into human ability. So God supernaturally intervening in these kinds of things. He suspends natural laws. He suspends things that would normally take place and God overrides that. That's the working of miracles. And the Bible again is full of this. So let's look at some examples. Water turning to wine is an, an example of God intervening in natural elements. Bread multiplying. Now if you keep a, keep a loaf of bread on your table, it doesn't just happen. It doesn't just multiply. But God overriding natural events, causing a loaf of bread to multiply, causing fish to multiply, causing a jar of oil to multiply. So debt could be canceled. God intervening in natural elements. God intervening in life situations. Jesus had to pay tax, just like you and me. <laughs> so the tax collectors came, hey, doesn't Jesus pay tax? So then Peter, Jesus told Peter, Peter, we've got to do this. All right. But you go down to the sea, cast your hook in, catch the fish. The first fish you catch will have a coin enough to pay your tax and mine. Now that's a miracle, but also dealt with a real life situation. Taxes had to be paid. A miracle to pay the tax. Or a business situation. Peter, James and John had been fishing all night. They hadn't caught anything. They were fishermen. They were doing what they were supposed to do. They had not caught anything. But Jesus comes there. After he finishes preaching, he says, Peter, I want you to go out. Launch your uh, net out into the deep. And he catches a huge catch of fish. Okay? A situation turned around. God's miracle power can be released through you into life situations to turn them around. That's the working of miracle. So put your hand out in front of you. I just want to help you believe this, you know, it's like, man, I, I can't believe it. Hey, this is you, through you. Say this with me. God's power can be released through me to cause miracles. God's power can be released through me to cause miracles. So that's the working of miracles, the gift. All these are gifts that God wants to release through you. To cause miracles take place in people's lives. Why? It's a manifestation of the spirit. It's putting God on display. Let them have an encounter with God. Let them see God working in their life. So, yeah. This is now, now what they do with that is up to them. But you put God on display. Your responsibility in mind. So put God on display. Through this. Right? So God suspect. Okay, God can do that. Or God can even override human ability. Think about Elijah running faster than a chariot of horses. Here are made Hussein Bolt jealous. <laughs> but it happened only once. But it did happen. Holy Spirit came on him. And he ran faster. And the horses. Overriding of human ability. A miracle. Think of. Uh, uh, supernatural things happening. Like David being able to design things. Or other you know, men empowered by the Holy Spirit. Are able to design things. A miracle. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So Samson. You know supernatural strength. He could. Uh, uh, not just ordinary strength. He didn't get it by working out in the gym. This was the Holy Spirit upon him. That gave him this ability. Miracle. Right? So the workings of miracles. Could also be. God's power overriding human ability. Causing us or causing people to do things which they would not normally able, be able to do. So whether it's in, the, uh, in natural elements, whether it's in life situations, circumstances turning around, and so on. And you know, you and I have meet people or sometimes we ourselves have situations where we need a miracle. 
And then somebody says, you know, my property, you know, I've invested money in something and people are not returning it or, you know, uh, maybe they invest in real estate. Uh, the property's not been built on time, not delivered. They need help. What do you do? Don't say, oh, I'm, I feel so sorry for you. You shouldn't have invested. You should have taken my advice, <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay, I mean, yes, we feel empathy. Yes, that's there. That's good. That, all of that is valid. But you must also tap into the working of. Okay, look, God's power can be released into that situation to cause that to turn around. To cause that situation to turn around. Tap in to the working of miracles. Whatever that situation may be, you can do something. Because there is this gift of the working in miracles. We're releasing God's power into that situation. You say, you know, people are hostile to me. They are, you know, somebody comes and says complaints to you. you know, people are very, being very hostile. They're, a lot of this, they're oppressing me. They're doing that. No, you know, on one hand, we can say, I really feel sorry for you. Give me a resume. I'll get you out of <laughs> I mean, that's practical. Okay, that's one way. But there's also this gift of the working miracles where you can release God's miracle power into that situation to turn that around. Now, has God done it in the past? Of course. Think about just one example. God's people have been slaves in Egypt for 400 years. Mistreated. Oppressed. But suddenly, they become highly favored. And they didn't win the lottery. They just become highly favored. The people who were their oppressors just suddenly extend favor. Why? It's just God's power. That's all. You know the same people? Same Egyptians? But they're just extending favor. And so much so they say, take whatever you want. Take whatever you want. So can God turn around a situation like that? He can. So you and I. When we encounter those situations, we will come with those kinds of problems. Look, yes, I empathize. Yes, I understand. Yes, we will try to help in the natural. But let's also do what we can by tapping into the gift of the working of miracles. And you can do it right there in your you know, situation there. Now, how do you release the gift of the working of miracles? Same way as the gifts of healing, gifts of healings. You speak faith. You speak and you act. You speak, you announce, you speak into that situation in the name of Jesus. So I release the gift to the working miracles. I release the power of God into the situation to turn this around. You command what you want to be done. You command what you want to be done in that situation. Are you with me? But God's miracle power, God wants to release that power through you. Now when that person sees something happen, they're going to have, that's an encounter with God. God's put himself on display before that person. Through you. Through the gift of the Spirit. Now that person has to make a decision. Is this God real? Or is he not? Don't want to follow him? Or not? But they have to make that decision. You can't do it. Many people would choose to follow. Some people are like, okay, I need three proofs. <laughs> so they'll wait till they get the third one. That's not in our control, but you've done your part. You at least given them the first one. So don't worry. Be faithful. Just step out in the gift of uh, working a miracle. So let's talk about the last one, faith, and then we will take some time to pray. So faith is something that we need very often in to operate along that, that operates along with the gift of healing, gifts of healings and working miracles. Faith, as we understand it, is our ability to believe God. Now we all have our normal level of faith. We, we all trust God. We walk in faith uh, in our normal level. But the gift of faith is an additional infusion of faith that the Holy Spirit brings into your heart at a given moment of time for a specific task. So suddenly the pussycat feels like a lion. Supernatural infusion of faith. Oh, I can do this. I can believe God for this. This can happen. This will happen. But then you've got to act on it. 
You got to speak it. So that infusion is given to your heart by the Holy Spirit. At that moment, you recognize. Now, I just believe. I can't believe. This is far above my normal believing. But then you've got to act on it. You've got to step out on it. If you don't, it's wasted. It doesn't produce results. Right? So the supernatural infusion of faith, the Holy Spirit brings into your heart at a moment. So typically, when you and I would step out to do something that's really Really way out, like say you try to raise the dead, or calm the storm on the sea, or uh, you know getting the lame to get out of the wheelchair and walk. It's like you know Peter walking by the temple and and he sees his lame man. He's been born lame, forty years, never walked in his life, and suddenly now Peter would have passed by him the previous day, and the day before, and probably all his life. Surely during that three and a half years of ministry with Jesus, they would have passed by this man. Nothing happened. But that afternoon, as they were walking by, Peter says, in Jesus' name, the name of Jesus Christ, man, to rise up and walk. Then Peter re- explains why in Acts 3.17, he says, Faith given to me by God has made this man whole. What caused it, Peter? Why didn't you do it yesterday? Well, this afternoon, something happened. Faith given to me by God, has made this man. It was a supernatural infusion of faith. And that man walked. Right? But Peter had to do something. The Bible says he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Scary. But Peter did it. Why did you do it, Peter? Faith given to me by God that moment to do that and you God wanted me to do it that's why Peter initiated it he told the man look on us why did you say it yesterday at that moment that look on us something happened that started this whole thing so when there's a supernatural infusion of faith that comes into your heart God has given it to you for a specific situation for a specific moment in time and for a specific task a situation that he wants you to address but you need to step out you need to speak in faith act in faith it'll bring about God's desired result put God on display and because of that one miracle the Bible says 4,000 people believed in Jesus Christ that day amen so are you with me so far right Uh, these gifts are for you and me I want you to have and expectation in your heart throughout the week that God, these things can flow through my life. Gifts of healings, workings of miracles. Okay. They put God on display. They do something. These are manifestations of the Spirit. Amen? All right. Call our worship team up, please. So before we dismiss, let's do it. Let's, right here, take some time to uh, pray, minister, release healings, miracles. Maybe God infuses some of our hearts with faith to speak certain things, do certain things. Let's do it. Why don't we all stand up to our feet, please? And all right. We're going to start with neck problems. You, you heard uh, Anika's testimony. She said she had a neck problem. I don't know what exactly it was. But in church camp, during prayer time, that little girl's neck popped. <laughs> and she said she's been fine since then. So we're going to start off with that. And just pray and minister to people. We've got problems in the neck, maybe the upper part of your neck or the lower part of your neck. We've got to pray for those uh, with those kinds of problems. Okay, we're going to pray for that. And then we'll pray for generally for everyone else. Now, but I want you to do it. I'm going to pray from here. But I want those of you, and we're going to ask people to raise hands. And then I want you to step out and say, God, do this through me. Do this through me. Right? We're just channels. Nothing great about us. Peter said, not by our own power or not by our holiness. But it's in the name of Jesus. 
Right? So don't look at yourself. It's not about you. It's the name of Jesus. It's His power. It's the manifestation of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's power flowing through you to bring healing. So what we will do is this. We'll just pray for people. First one, just to start off with it. Pray for this specifically. Then after we pray for all other conditions. But to start off, they're going to pray for people with problems in the neck. You know, you, maybe you in, had an injury. Uh, maybe you uh, had some sort of accident and it caused a problem in your neck. And we're gonna, I'm going to ask you to put your hand up. And I'm going to ask people around you, one or two people, just to come to you and pray for that. And then we will see if God does anything right now. Right? They can be instantaneous healings taking place, right? So people, if you have anyone here with a problem with your neck, just raise your hand. I'm going to ask people to come to you and pray with you. Just put your hand up. And those around, just go, go to them. Go to them. Just pray with them. I see a few hands. I, I, I don't see this, anyone up in the balcony. But just see, just turn around. See if somebody has their hand. Just, and just go to them and pray. I'm going to pray from here. But I want you to pray. Right after that, we're going to ask them to check. Right? See if there's any immediate healing. Often the healing happens immediately. Some it's progressive. Either way, it's okay as long as the person gets well. But if it happens immediately, let's celebrate right away. Right? So, go to the per people who may have their hands up. The neck. Okay? And uh, we're going to pray right now. Uh, they could have had an injury. They could have some other cause for it. Don't worry about the cause. But very simply, you speak to the neck in the name of Jesus. You say, in Jesus' name, neck, I command you to be whole. Okay, I'm going to pray from here. Just pray this. Let's do this together. Let's do this. In Jesus' name, I command the neck to be made whole. Every injury, be healed. Bones, be healed. Nerves, go to your place. In the name of Jesus, any spirit of pain, I command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, any spirit of infirmity, I command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, I command the neck to be made whole. Right now, right now, in Jesus' name, I release the power of the Holy Spirit to heal this neck right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those who are prayed for, check your neck. See if that pain is gone or if it's come down a little bit. It's starting to heal or it's completely healed. Right? Just check your neck and there is no pressure to testify. But if God has indeed done something, something's happened immediately, then just wave your hands. You say, I, I, something has happened right now in prayer, then you raise your hands, okay? But there's no pressure to do it. We want to be honest. We want to maintain integrity in what we do, right? So I see the hand right up there. What happened there? Right at the back. One hand, God has done something right away. Wonderful. Anybody else? You feel like something has happened. I see another hand right there back there two God has done something right away three God has done something right away in the neck area we want to maintain integrity there's no pressure to put your hand but three people wonderful wonderful something has happened right away God bless you right so maybe out of six three that's 50 percent good right and um if you need to go get checked by a doctor, you need to do that, do it. Don't be afraid. God's healing stand the test, uh, stand medical tests, and don't worry about any of that, okay? Go get it checked. If you uh, were not able to do something, try to do that. Don't be afraid. God's healing power is real, and we can be entirely honest, open, in, and maintain integrity as we check this out. Amen, amen. Let's thank the Lord. God, just thank you. Even for these three things, God, right here. We thank you, God. We bless you. We honor you. Okay. So if God can do something for the neck, He can do something for the rest of the body too. Amen? Very simple, right? Not complicated. So let's pray for everything else. Okay? So if you need healing in your body, or you need a miracle in your life situation. So we did talk about gifts of healings, workings of miracles. Right? For a miracle in a life situation, example, if you're going to go to somebody and they say, look, you know, uh, I have a big financial problem. 
I have loan, huge loans to clear. I'm finding it difficult. Don't shout so loudly that you embarrass the person. You just whisper. It's not the loudness of your voice. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So you can even whisper and God's power will be released. So, relax. All you have to do is you, you release a miracle. You say, in Jesus' name, God, release a miracle for this person to clear their debt. Right? You don't try to figure out how it's going to happen. That's up to God. Right? How God is going to, you know, maybe somebody will give them a gift. Maybe somebody will come and say, you know, uh, I, I'm going to cancel this, this amount of debt. Or, or maybe, you know, uh, something God will bring into their lives to help them clear it. It's up to how God wants to solve that is up to Him. Your job is to release the God, God's power into that situation to cause a miracle to clear that situation. Right? So, this morning at North, uh, while I was ministering there, I had a picture of a, of a, of a in our hallway and there were rooms on either side of the hallway and a lot of confusion was happening between people so i called it up and two of the people they were the brothers so they came forward they said you know this is this is exactly what what's going on in our life our situation right now that hallway they knew exactly what that hallway was the rooms around it they knew exactly what it was and they said that's exactly what's going on there's a lot of people around there's problems happening and so that was describe the situation, but what God wanted to do, wanted to do was release miracle to heal the confusion that was going on in that situation. So what do you do? You speak. You say, I release God's power. I command the confusion to leave. I command peace to come and good understanding to come between the people involved in that. That's what you do. Now it's God's part to bring about that miracle. Right? So we're going to go after these two things. Any kind of healing in your body or a miracle that you need in your life situation, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to ask people around you to come to you. And they're going to ask you, what shall I pray for? So you, your question is, what shall I pray for? And then in one sentence, you reply. Please don't start with the entire history. This is not, you know, you don't do that. Just say, please pray for this. One sentence. So then you go ahead and pray. Speak words of faith. Release God's miracle. Release God's healing into that. And let's expect God to do something. And don't, don't determine things by the size of the problem. It could be something big. Maybe it's a birth defect. It's something like incurable disease. It's okay. It's, not, it's big for us, not for God. So don't let that limit you. You say, God, heal. God, release a miracle. And you do your part. And then let's see what God does. Can we do that? Amen? Very simple. So, if somebody needs healing in your body or a miracle in your life situation, nothing to be embarrassed. If you want somebody to pray for you, you lift your hand up. I'm going to ask people to come to you. All right? So, you see the hands up, people? Just move around. Just feel free to go to them and say, what can I pray for you? One simple line question. What can I pray for you? I see up in the balcony as well, so we need people to pray there. Just go to this person uh, who has his or her hand raised. Ask them a simple question. What can I pray for you? And they will tell you. And then if it's a, a life situation, you know what to do. You need to speak and release God's miracle power into that situation uh, or, or healing for their body. All right? So just do that. I just want everyone. There are more people. We need more people up in the balcony to be prayed for. So you can move around. Take a few moments, please. Um, I see another hand here. Just ask them, what can I pray for you? And then pray to speak healing or speak a miracle. Lord, this is your church. We are your people. Work through your people today. Work through your people today. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Release your miracles. Release your healings. Release your power through your people, God, today. We are your people. Release your miracles. Release your healing. Today. Situations at home, let them turn around. Release your miracle. 
Release your power, O God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just give you thanks that you are the miracle worker. You, O oh God, are the healer. And in the name of Jesus, I join faith with everyone who's prayed here and been prayed for. I command healing to the bodies. I take authority of every work of the devil and I break it in Jesus' name. I break every yoke of sickness. I break every yoke of disease off of people's bodies. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command spirits of infirmities to go. Arthritic conditions, arthritis to be healed completely in Jesus' name. By the power of God. And release life. I release the power of the Holy Spirit. To make people whole in their bodies, in their minds. And God release a miracle power into people's situations, into their life situations. Release your power, God. Let there be supernatural provision that cancels debts and brings up supply for financial needs. Let homes be released from oppression. Let houses be released from people who are holding it back by a supernatural power. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if God has done something for you, please do share it with us. Right? Send an email, send a testimony. We'd like to share it. I want to share this testimony and I close couple of Sundays back while ministering here, I, I called out, I mentioned something I said about uh, a person here who had a case against them. And uh, it was during this, our, our service, 1030 service, and there was uh, uh, oppression against them. But I said, God is telling you, you will be released from it. Just... Now, we didn't take any testimony that Sunday, but I got a message this person sent it through WhatsApp. Uh, not WhatsApp, through our church app. <laughs> so this message came through our church app. Uh, that same week, they saw God's intervention. That person was in this. He said, I was shocked when I heard it. I was having a court case thing going on. He said, I was shocked. Now, I wouldn't know. I still don't know who the person is. <laughs> so I wouldn't know what would but God had a word for that person. And the person was shocked to hear it. But then God intervened exactly the way he said he would do. Amen. So simple. He released that word. But God does the miracle. And he blesses somebody's life. Amen. So I want to encourage you. If God has done something, just feel free to send a message. Just share it. We will share it in general, you know, in, uh, without mentioning names. We'll share the miracle, share what God's done. And God wants to do these things through each one of us. Amen? So go out. Become zealous of these spiritual gifts. God's waiting to put himself on display through your life. Amen. Let's close. And Lord, we just pray that in all of this, you will be glorified exalted through each of us. Let Jesus be exalted. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Get excited about the spiritual gifts. Put God on display everywhere you go. Have a great Sunday.
We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at abcwo.org. Also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.